Hey guys, and welcome to part two of my tutorial series for how to add 3D objects realistically into your video footage using Blender and Adobe After Effects. Now in part one, I almost got crashed by a barrel dropping from the sky. So this time I figured I'd be smart and I'd film this inside because there's absolutely no way that's um, Okay, um, well, that just happened. In part one, I showed you how to use Blender to match your camera, rebuild your scene geometry, and then add and render out the 3D objects. In this part, I'm going to show you how to take those rendered elements and composite them back onto the original video footage using Adobe After Effects. Now, this is going to be an intermediate tutorial, and I will assume that you have watched part one, but also that you are pretty comfortable using Adobe After Effects. If you're new to everything, I'm going to drop you links to some beginner tutorials down below, so be sure to check that out before you come back here. Also, if you do want to support me, it'd be amazing if you could hit that like button. It makes a big difference and I really appreciate it. But now, before anything else crashes on me, let's jump into the tutorial. Welcome to the wonderful world of Adobe After Effects. I have a brand new empty project here. And let's start by importing the footage that we will need to create this effect. So let's bring in some clips and as always, if you do want to follow along, you will be able to download these files from our website. So simply go to surfacedstudio.com forward slash downloads and you will be able to download these files so you can follow along. Let's first grab the monkey drop.mp4, which is the base clip that we used in part one to kind of render out the monkey head on top of. Together with that, I've got debris, movie, ground cracks, smoke and sparks. There's some stock footage elements I've created that we are going to use to composite this effect and make it look a little bit more realistic. Let's hit import. And the next clip I want to bring in is in this render folder. And this is the actual image sequence that I rendered out from Blender. So hopefully you should have this already if you followed along with part one. Otherwise, again, you can just download this from our website. Let's select the very first image in the sequence. Make sure you have the PNG sequence option enabled in Adobe After Effects so it knows it's an animation sequence. And then hit import. Now, before we get to the compositing, let's select monkey drop. And you can actually double click this to preview it in After Effects as well. And this is the clip here. Just me pretending to have the monkey drop right in there. And over on the top left hand side in the project panel, you can see that this clip is set to run at 23.976 frames per second. And if you select the monkey drop image sequence that we rendered out from Blender, you will note that this has been set to 30 frames per second. By default, After Effects just assumes 30 frames per second for any image sequence. So let's right click onto this image sequence in the project panel, come to interpret footage and main, and let's set this frame rate to 23.976 seven six because we want this rendered sequence to match out exactly with the frame rate of the video we're going to composite it onto so with that let's hit okay and we're ready to start compositing let's grab the monkey drop.mp4 drop it onto the new composition icon to create a new composition and again this is just a clip of me pretending to have that monkey drop on the right side of the street then let's grab the monkey drop PNG image sequence and drag that into our sequence. I'm going to drop it right about where I think that sequence should probably start. Somewhere around here, let's just slide it over and there's the monkey head falling. Now, timing wise, that doesn't really make sense. So let's just make sure that just as I'm starting to flinch, just before that the monkey head must have hit. So let's just align these sequences a little bit. So maybe it just bounced one or two frames and then I twitch. That looks time wise. Quite all right. And I'm just noticing over on the bottom right here, my monkey drop.mp4, so a bunch of markers that got imported with it. Don't really want that, so I'm going to right click that layer, come up to markers and delete all markers just to clear that out. Let's rewind a little bit and play this back. Tutorial. Now it is finally time to. Holy! And that's actually not too bad. Now let's disable the audio on that clip just so it doesn't interfere with the tutorial. and. While timing wise, that works quite all right. That monkey, because in Blender, I've had the monkey head start right about there and then slowly drop. You can actually see that it falls kind of slow and then speeds up and then bounces off. And I kind of want that monkey to kind of hammer down with just a little bit more force. So it feels like it's been falling for a long time and it's just kind of smashing into the street from above. And for that, I'm just going to speed up the clip. So let's right click the monkey drop PNG image sequence come up into time and enable time remapping so we can freely speed up and slow down any parts of this clip. Let's come to where the monkey hits the ground, which is right about there. 
on the time remap effect, let's set a keyframe. And let's take the first keyframe here and move this over to the right. So we're compressing the time that this monkey has to drop. So the drop itself will happen a whole lot faster. So, so there you can see the monkey is coming down a whole lot quicker already. Let's rewind and play this back. Yeah, see that looks a lot more powerful. The monkey just kind of shoots down and then hits the street with a whole lot more force. So that looks a whole lot better already. Let's just trim the layer in to start where that first keyframe starts. And I am noticing that the very first frame, have a look at the top here, just on this little concrete bit. Can you see the shadow suddenly appears when the layer appears because we haven't really faded that in. So let's come to the very beginning of this layer, press T to reveal the opacity, set a keyframe. Let's just go a few frames forward and see when the monkey comes in. So at that point, when the monkey comes into the screen, I want this to be 100%. So make sure we have a keyframe for 100% there. Come back to the first one, set the opacity to zero. So the layer has just a couple of frames to fade in and it doesn't look so abrupt. That looks a whole lot better. Let's zoom back out. And while this now works, because we essentially have our monkey head rendered on a transparent backdrop with the shadow, it's now composited on our video layer colors don't quite match. It doesn't really sit in there. It looks a bit too dark and everything is a little bit blue-ish. It might look a bit different depending on what screen you're watching this tutorial on, but the monkey head just doesn't fit in color-wise. So the first thing I want to do is just color correct a little bit, just so it blends in a bit better. For that, in our effects and presets panel, let's search for the curves effect. And if you have video copilot effects console, which I highly recommend, you can also just press control or command and space and then the search for the curves effect. Let's select that and apply it to the layer come into the effect controls. Let's zoom in just a little bit so we can see this just a little bit better on what we're doing here with this monkey head. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make it just a little bit brighter. So maybe around about there, let's come into the blue channel. And I think I want to just give it a little bit more blue, not a whole lot. I don't want it too blue, just kind of a little bit of a tinge. So it kind of, it feels like it just matches in a little bit better. And it's quite subtle, but without the curves, it looks like this. With the curves, it looks like that. And it just feels like it actually, it, it just fits into that shot a whole lot better. The colors match better. It's just a tad too bright. I'm just gonna make it just a little bit darker. Cool, I think that works better. The next thing we need to do is, usually when you composite a rendered 3D element into your shot, it tends to be too sharp, too crisp to really match onto that footage. Now this monkey, because I haven't really rendered it out at a terribly high resolution, it kind of already matches the depth of field of the camera. It's not super crisp, but I think I might just blur it out just a tad more to match in with kind of the focus that is on the rest of the street. So let's just search for and apply the fast box blur effect and apply it to this layer. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna totally go overboard, right? Like even three, even, even one is way too much. I think I wanna be very, very subtle, maybe 0.0. .0 five, let's see, ah, still a little bit too much, maybe 0.005, because I just want it to be really subtle, just a little bit of softening. Yep, I think that works all right. The next thing you need to do when you composite CG onto video footage is make sure that the noise kind of matches and the noise kind of looks all right. There's a fair bit of noise already in the render. There's a fair bit of noise in the video footage. Now the one in the video footage seems a little bit more blocky but I don't think it's too noticeable, especially because the monkey head is actually quite small in the shot. It still does look a little bit crisp, but it kind of matches the sharpness of the shot. So I think that actually kind of matches all right. And technically we could literally stop here and this would be the effect done. However, it kind of looks a bit dull. If you really had a heavy metal framed monkey head drop onto the street, you'd imagine some damage happening on the street, right? Like cracks in the cement, maybe some bits and pieces flying off and some other things going on. You'd also probably want to add a bit of camera shake, just to add a bit of realism to the whole thing. So let's just do that. And because I'm going to assume that you are quite comfortable using Adobe After Effects, I'm going to go fairly quickly. If you're new to Adobe After Effects, I have a beginner tutorial series that I'm going to link you down below. So go and check that out if this is going a little bit too fast for you. First, let's add some ground cracks. And I think I want them to appear right when that monkey smacks into the concrete. So let's come back to our project panel and I've created this little ground cracks JPEG image. So let's bring that in. I'm going to place that underneath the monkey head layer and that is way too big. So let's just scale that down. Let's zoom back in, scale it down just a little bit more, place it kind of underneath the monkey head. Let's turn that into a 3D layer. I'm going to rotate it a little bit so it kind of aligns kind of with the surface of the road. Move it down a little bit and yeah, I think that works all right. 
Let's reveal the blend modes and change the blend mode over to multiply. Let's also make sure that the layer starts exactly when this monkey hits the road. So right there, so before it should kind of come in right there. And that works all right. I think it kind of, it appears a bit too quick. I don't really quite like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a mask and animate it to reveal this layer within just one or two frames. So let's just zoom in a little bit. Make sure you're at the beginning of this ground cracks layer. Let's grab the pen tool. I'm actually going to hide the monkey head temporarily. I'm just going to draw a mask around some of the cracks close by first because I kind of just want to reveal maybe those ones mm to reveal the properties I'm just going to soften this mask out a little bit and set a keyframe on the mask path let's go two frames forward double click the mask and let's just I'm just going to scale it out and I'm holding Control and shift or command and option if you're on a Mac down just so it scales uniformly and from the center outwards I'm going to pull it all the way out so it kind of reveals all of the cracks so hopefully now so you kind of get that crack appearing with just a couple of frames. Let's zoom back out, re-enable the monkey head. Let's rewind and play this back. Cool. And I think that looks pretty good. The only thing is I think the ground crack is just a little bit too dark. I think it's a bit too solid. So let's just tweak the opacity a little bit. Maybe not too low, maybe about 70 to 80. I just want to have it a little bit transparent. So it's not, it's not too strong. Maybe, yeah, maybe I think I'm going to add a curves effect to that as well and just give it a little bit of blue just to again just blend it in a little bit nicer and again they, all of these are really subtle effects but they overall they all add to just making it look a little bit more realistic next let's come to the fun stuff and add some debris just as the monkey hits and again i'm going to come to the beginning of this ground cracks layer because that marks my impact point for the monkey head let's come back to the project panel and now here i've got a debris a smoke and a spark stock footage element that I've created. You can just use them for whatever you want, but I've created them using trap code particular for this particular, no pun intended scene, but you can use them for whatever you want to. Let's just grab this debris movie, bring that into our composition. I'm going to drop that at the very top. Let's just slide it over. And essentially what this is, let me solo the layer and hide the transparency grid. And that's just kind of like a bunch of concrete elements kind of just flying about and bouncing on the ground. Let's unsolo that. And again, I'm just going to align that so it kind of gets spawned right at the time the monkey smacks into the road. So right about there. Let's rewind and play this back. Cool. That looks pretty good, but I don't want the debris to be on top of the monkey head. So let's drag that to the bottom. I also don't want the debris to suddenly disappear right here. So I want to extend the end of this layer. And for that, again, right click time, enable time remapping, and that's going to set keyframes to control the time. And now I can extend the end of this layer and it'll just hold the last frame right there. Next, let's add a bit of smoke, because usually when you smack a hammer into concrete, there's a bit of like dust and powder kind of being blown into the air. So again, where the monkey hits, let's grab this smoke MOV, and this time I'm going to drag it to the top of my composition. And it's just going to slide that over a little bit. So that's just kind of like a smoke cloud being pushed out right there. So maybe right there is where I want it to start. I'm going to change the blend mode from normal over to screen, maybe trim in the beginning a little bit. So just as it's, uh, maybe it needs to start one frame earlier. So maybe at that point, I kind of want that smoke to come out as well. And again, let's rewind and play this back. Cool, that works pretty well. Now the smoke again is a little bit too wide for me. So once again, I'm going to apply a curves effect. I'm just going to make this a little bit darker actually. And again, come into the blue channel, add a bit of blue into it, just so everything matches and blends just a little bit nicer. Cool, I kind of like how that looks. Finally, and again, you can keep going with this. The last thing I'm going to add is just add a little bit of sparks. I'm just going to drag this into my composition, place it at the very top, just a really, really short kind of spark burst happening. And I want that to happen same time the monkey hits. I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer from normal over to additive, just so it glows a bit. As I said, you don't need to, but I think it's just kind of like a nice little detail. So with that, I think the impact of the monkey looks pretty good, except the monkey head ends. So let's come to the end of this layer, expand the effects, come to the time remapping. We already have a last keyframe. I'm just going to extend the layer until the end of my composition as well, just so that this monkey head kind of comes to rest right there. And with that, we're almost done. The last thing I want to do is add a little bit of camera shake just to give the monkey impact a little bit more power. 
And again, I have a separate tutorial that explains how to do camera shake. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because I'm going to assume that you have watched that tutorial already. If you haven't, I'm going to link you that down below. So for that, let's select all of our layers, Control Shift or Command Shift and C to pre-compose them. I am going to call this composition Monkey Drop Comp. Let's hit OK. Let's come to the point where the monkey head impacts the road. Let's search for the slider control. And again, if you have FX console, control or command and space, and you can do the same thing. Highly recommend you get it, it's so much easier. But let's just find the slider control in here, apply it to our layer. Let's go back one frame, enable the keyframes on the slider, come forward. Let's set this one to maybe five. Let's come forward maybe just about a second and set this back to zero. If you press U to reveal the keyframes, here are the keyframes for the slider control, but nothing happens because that slider doesn't yet control anything. So with the layer selected, press P to reveal the position property, hold down Alt or Option if you're on a Mac and click on that stopwatch icon to add an expression. And in here, I'm simply going to type wiggle, open bracket, 24, comma, and then I'm going to use this pick web icon to select the slider control value to insert that into the expression. Close another round bracket and click outside. So now the shake of my footage is controlled by the value of that slider. So right there, it starts to shake a little bit and then it kind of fades back out. Actually, let's select the layer again, press U to reveal those keyframes, select them all and hit F9 to enable Bezier interpolation. So it kind of just fades them in and out a little bit more naturally. But again, we're seeing black edges on the footage. So let's apply the motion tile effect to this layer, set the output width to 150, output height 150, and enable mirror edges. So it's going to fill in those dark edges on the outside of our footage. So that looks pretty good. Finally, let's enable motion blur on the layer and on the composition if you haven't yet. And let's rewind and play this back. Cool, and I would say that actually looks pretty good. Finally, whenever you composite 3D elements into your footage and you add other stock footage elements or other things to blend it all together, I highly recommend putting everything through a final color grading or color adjustment just so it binds all of those layers together a little bit. So I'm just going to whip up a small adjustment layer here, call this one grading. Maybe I'll just apply a curse effect, just keep it simple for now. It's going to add a little bit more contrast into the footage. Maybe I'll just make it a little bit more blue in the darks and maybe add some green into the highlights just to kind of give it a little bit of a stylistic look. And because this applies both to the base footage as well as the 3D element and all of the stock footage, it kind of just binds them all together. It's kind of like the sandwich press at the end of making your sandwich. And this kind of makes it look a little bit more cohesive. So with that, let's rewind our composition and play back our final, very simple, but fully completed 3D integration of a monkey head smashing into the road, integrated into a real life shot. Now, this is only part two of what I hope to be a longer series to cover all of the different scenarios with moving cameras and physics and all of the other exciting things that you can do to integrate 3D elements with your real life footage. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Just leave me some comments down below on what you would like to see next. And that's all there is to it. Once again, many thanks to Jimmy from axe to grind who keeps helping me making all of these videos for you guys. So be sure to check out his channel and show him some love. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to enable the little bell icon because YouTube is a bit weird and if you want to get notified. If you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right-hand side. And with that, thank you very much for watching and until next time, we will see you later.